my motto is when I want something, when I want to achieve something, I tell myself yes and then I do it. Crystal Joy and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am an actress, writer, and founder of Blue Room Productions. I post blogs, behind the scenes commentary on my projects, and my films. So before this video is over, make sure you hit the subscribe button below to stay up to date. In today's video, I wanted to talk to you about my early work. In my last video, I gave you a brief overview of my journey into becoming an actress and a filmmaker, moving from Chicago to New York City. I started writing for people before I started creating my own work. And I started networking with other students in my acting classes. So I remember taking an on-camera acting class and one of the fellow students said that she was looking for a script writer to rewrite a script. And she asked me if I was interested. And even though it was my first writing experience, I still felt very, very comfortable. That project was called Don't Mess With Helen. I wrote it in 2015. That experience taught me how to take other people's feedback and incorporate it in the script. It also showed me the power of networking with people in your classes. You never know who someone else is going to become, but you have everyone that you need in that creative hub. The second film that I wrote was called Hilda and that was in 2015 for a 24 hour film festival. That was the most intimidating and intense situation that I had been in. So you had 24 hours to write, cast, and shoot a short film. Hilda was supposed to be a comedy. I'm not for sure if it came out that way. <laughs> I had to write this, this short film in a matter of a few hours. It was also fun to see the project go from just a short film that I wrote in my living room to being a finished project. And it actually won for Best Actress in the film festival, which was which was really, really cool. But what I encourage other people to do a 24-hour film festival, it's completely up to you. I don't know. I didn't like it. <laughs> I'm just gonna be honest, I didn't like it. I didn't like being pressured like that. And even though I was a beginner filmmaker, you know, even though I was still expanding my portfolio, it was a lot of pressure because I didn't have the chance to really sit with it. Even though I didn't really care for that setup of doing something in under 24 hours, it was still a learning experience. I would say to other filmmakers who are in this process of wanting to create your own work is make sure that you're writing for other people as well. It's a great way to expand your portfolio, especially when you're just starting out. One of the things that really helped me out as a filmmaker was joining collectives. I joined a collective that included actors, writers, directors, um, just all different types of crew members. And these were all people that were looking to create films. It's imperative that you stay in the environment that you wish to work in. And so for me, that was joining groups, collectives, and programs that were geared towards filmmakers. So being that I'm a woman, I'm a black woman, I would join groups that were geared towards women, geared towards people of color. The internet is your friend. So get on social media and join other collectives, join groups. If you don't see the type of content that you wanna watch, create it. When I first started my journey, I only wanted to be an actress. I had no intentions of creating my own projects, but I was so inspired by seeing black filmmakers take up space, just watching different artists. And it really motivated me to become my own boss by creating my own content. The first thing is when you are trying to create your own project, especially if it's your first project, Keep it simple. I was taught that you want to kind of start off small. Keep your crew small. Keep, especially in your script, because when you're a beginner filmmaker, you don't have a lot of money. Let's just be honest. You don't have a lot of money. And I didn't have a lot of money at that time. I actually had to raise money to make my first project. And that still wasn't enough. So I made Crumble in 2016. It was an 11 page script shot in one day. First three hours of shooting, we had to reshoot because we forgot a key prop. 
and that key prop was the backpack that the main character Kyle wears. When we realized that we forgot that prop, it was just like, are you serious? Ended up having to start over again. So we lost three hours of daylight and we lost three hours of shooting time but we got it done. <laughs> that set had a skeleton crew. When I say skeleton, it was the director and the sound person. That was it. And then it was me and the other actor. So one of the things that I learned while working on that project is that you will have to double duty. So yes, I was the actress and the writer, but I also had to be the sound person. I had to be the PA, I had to be the director's assistant. I had to wear several hats that day. And that's just a part of making indie projects is you will have to wear more than one hat. As far as finances go, I was actually able to raise money. I used Indiegogo and I raised between 600 to $800. Now I did have to include my own money. But I was thankful because my friends and my family really contributed and helped me achieve that dream. Because my budget for Crumble was small, I, when it came down to post-production, I ended up hiring a student editor. That was the most budget cost-friendly option that I had. And I was in the editing room with her every single session. I wanted to be a part of this entire process. And I was really able to see how editing goes and I learned a thing or two. So once again, when you are making your own projects, you will have to be in every seat. You will have to wear every hat because it is your project. You are the one that's making it. Oh, Crumble is a film about a couple, Brianna and Kyle, that are involved in a toxic relationship and they don't know how to let go. I've always been attracted to projects that feel really close to reality. And so Crumble was a project that I wanted to feel like I know this person. I know this couple. I know this character. I know this situation. And how many of you have been involved in a toxic relationship before? It's not an unknown or uncommon thing. So the inspiration for Crumble came from many different things. It honestly just came from experience and life. Taking the train in New York City is an experience because so many different things can happen. You hear so many different conversations and you can't help but to, but to listen. You can't help but to be there. And I cannot tell you the amount of intense and interesting conversations that I heard on the train on top of my own life experiences, listening to my friends, to my coworkers, talking about their relationship woes. And I was able to take all of that and create this mumblecore slice of life project. Practice does not make perfect. It makes progress. I think something that can choke a lot of filmmakers is this idea of perfection. I realized that your first, even your second or third film, it might suck. It might not be that good. I know of several artists who have all of this unfinished work and I didn't want to waste my time. The biggest thing for me was starting. I knew that I had to start somewhere. Once I saw the finished product of Crumble, it gave me the motivation to do it again. Cause I was able to look back at the journey from writing the scripts and getting the cast and crew together to its completion. I felt proud and it gave me the inspiration to make another project. I was inspired honestly from my own accomplishment. Don't get caught up in perfection. Don't get caught up in thinking that you're not good enough. That's an idea that you gave yourself. So I want people to see my growth. I want people to see where I started to where I am now. And I want them to see how I've grown and how I've elevated and how I've stepped my game up. This year makes nine years I've been pursuing my acting and my filmmaking career. I have a strong determination to get things done. And when it came to making Crumble, I knew I was working with a lot of limitations, but I didn't want that to be an excuse as to why I couldn't make that project. There will be so many problems that come your way that you won't even anticipate, that you would not have been able to have thought of. With indie filmmaking, that's just what it's going to be, is you will always have a large set of limitations. You have to learn how to work with them, not even around them, because working around them can cause more frustration than what you need. I learned on the set of Crumble was the art of getting it done. The art of completing something from beginning to end and sticking with it, sticking through it. 
it's going to be challenging. You are going to have things to test you. That's just life. You don't wait for the perfect circumstances. You don't wait for someone else to tell you yes. You tell yourself yes, and then you do it. All right, guys, so that is a wrap on today's, <laughs> that's a wrap. This is not a film. Thank you guys so much for tuning into today's video. Do not forget to hit the subscribe button and to follow me on all social media handles, which are in the description box below. I'll see you next week. Thank you.